Hey, welcome back to the table, virtual table at least. Uh, so we have this quest to do, and I believe... So, like, we've been able to go here... That bandit boss quest. I guess what I'm curious is, in order to defeat the bandit boss, did we always have to do this one first? And the answer might be yes. What I'm trying to decide to do is, can I go... I want to go back and get rid of Doctor Doom and get my my other character. But I don't want to have to repeat this mission. Cut down. Alright, I'm going to take the risk. We're going to go back. And there you can see, I'm only two demons away from getting him retired. So I'm going to grab Alice. Maybe not the best choice, but I want to, you know, help them get leveled up. We have Mork and Mindy and Lola with them. Uh, they're all level 9. We also have regular Mindy. Uh, demons. Okay, we'll help repair. That gave us the prosperity, which was good. So, we're super close of even getting Dr. Doom retired. I mean, I think it would take two full missions to... I mean, we could get a mission where we kill the demon and then just fail the mission. But, um, it is doable. The, the one thing, you know, we're contemplating here is we have Mindy... And we're going to start phasing her down a little bit. I mean, she's still awesome. But maybe, just maybe, you know, we should sell this, for example. Because Alice needs it. But I'm just realizing Alice only has one gold. So we don't need to get that ahead of ourselves here. The uh, bard has one of them can afford... Oh, that's right. We wanted to get a potion. And all she has is a major. So who the heck else has a potion? Who else is there? There's Grizzly Adams. I guess Eraserhead probably has two of the potions, doesn't he? Yep, he's using two of the potions. Alright, so we'll be able to fix that after Eraserhead retires. Um, okay, that makes sense. And then Eraserhead's going to go to the Temple of the Oak. Let's get blessed. May push this along a little bit. We haven't been doing that lately. Uh, because we don't have uh, a lot of people uh, with money who need to retire. Okay, so now this was the big risk. Is Can I go straight to here? And yes, I can. Alright, so... This is the one that has all the demons. That was an amazing one. We actually did very well. All right, let's go to Bandit's Wood. Uh, this will unlock the guy. I actually cheated and looked how many more do we need to do before this quest line finishes. This is the final quest. So five gold per head. Uh, Eraserhead has the money. Or we can fight, which means we'll start the battle probably wounded. I didn't get to divide how it gets paid. Not all of our guys had five gold. Screams in the distance, and you shrug off the bandits 
intimidation, not wanting to waste more time on this rabble. Okay. Have one or more present. I think we can do that. Uh, I don't think it matters, but we'll do the reveal door. Take only short rests. We're going to kill an elite. Kill an undamaged or gain seven or fewer. Neither of those are going to happen. This one's definitely not going to happen because the songs themselves are going to give me more than seven points. So we'll try that one. And here we go. <coughs> I'm excited. This last character we're going to unlock is a really good one. Very powerful character. Like a good tanky type of character. These other ones are squishy, right? The Bard and the Summoner are very squishy. Even the the Beast Tyrant is squishy. But the Bear, of course, is a nice tank. Uh, this next one we're going to unlock is going to be... Um, I mean, it's your classic D&D &D Rager type. Okay, so I'm standing here in the corner. I think this one needs to go in the corner. And maybe we can do a little bit of that. I like to move it up a little bit. I know it makes the map look a little smaller, but the top down is more helpful to me than than this mode. Although the graphics are nice, I do agree. I need a bit more command. And then let's look at the thing here. We got, looks like one room and then another room. We need to protect the captured orchards. There's only three and kill all the enemies. All right, so we do need to get a room tile revealed pretty quickly. So Craggy can move towards them. But this retaliate too is gonna be very helpful. So we will do that. Uh, Cause that means he'll do four damage when somebody melee attacks him. And then as far as, like, here, you can see kill a normal enemy in range 4. So he can just straight up kill that wolf. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, since we got the wolves coming at us, a retaliate 2 is appropriate for the top. And for the bottom, let's bless and curse. And then for the bear. This will be an interesting one. Um, if I go after Craggy, the eraser head here, eraser head could kill him, and then the bear would move this way to attack this. I have to be careful because he might attack the bard. I'm going to move the bard over one more. I'm going to move Crag over one more. We'll put the bard in the middle. I think the reason for... Huh. We'll try it that way. Because I don't want the bard to be attacked. The bard's the one guy who can't heal himself very well. Uh, if he attacks the summoner, uh, no big deal. Okay. So, getting back to this. If I go higher than 46, which I could do here. This one will kill an enemy that's got a hit point value of 6 or less. But we'll go ahead and do that for the bottom piece, actually. And then for the top piece... Yeah, we could just do that. So we're just going after the Cragster. And then for the summoner. So last mission, we summoned all these little dudes. And then we used the lava golem. Instead of summoning the lava golem, we summoned, we used this to basically take back four burns. By re retrieving four burns, we made it so we lasted a lot longer in the mission. So the mission was not, um, uh, you know, we didn't get exhausted so easily because we were able to extend the mission by quite a few more turns. Um, 
this lava golem is amazing, but believe it or not, the seven damage health that he has, it can get whittled away fast. Um, it does put fire on the board, and it also wounds. It's actually really, really good. I just was amazed at how quickly he's died in a couple of missions so far. We did buy these these uh, nail spheres, and uh, we're going to go ahead and put those out first. And then for the bottom piece... Hmm. We can heal ourselves, or we can just heal somebody else. We'll go ahead and just heal somebody else. Oh, gotta get the bear out. And my apologies, my dog is a very demanding dog when she comes to attention. And she wants me to sit next to her. So I had to clear my chair here so she could sit next to me. Yes, but I missed you too. I was gone all day, so she's very, very sad. Okay, um, the rangers, or archers are going to go real early. They're going to move to range 4 attack, so they're probably going to hit us pretty hard. Uh, this one's going to poison us. <coughs> and then the hounds, look at that, 4 damage, 3 damage. We're definitely taking some damage here. Um, the retaliate will help. Okay, so the question is, if I put out these summons now, I think the, the drawback is, is they're going to be very high likelihood chance of getting killed. Either the archers are going to target them, because they always target whoever's closest. Uh, so I'm going to actually hold on to it. And here we go. And there they go, attacking the bard. Out of all the characters. And traps are going everywhere. Yep, the hounds are all getting to go first. Okay, so we're going to put our retaliate on. Kill a normal enemy at range 4. There's an archer I can kill instead of the hound. Gonna do that. And I can kill myself a little. Okay, the bear just went. And now we got this thing here where we can kill somebody with 6 hit points or less. So we can just straight up kill that that wolf, which that's fantastic. And then we can heal everybody, which gets rid of the poison. There's like no complaints whatsoever with that. And of course we got some more summons we can do, and don't necessarily want to do that. And I do want to get these cards back though, so let's do that piece. So yeah, we're gonna hold off on the summons. There was no way to put them out, even if I wanted to. Now, her, on the other hand, we have the room. Get those beautiful little balls in play. And we can heal somebody, even. So I'm going to go... I can heal the bard, or I can heal the bear. I'm actually going to heal the bear for now. I can... <laughs> I got a summon here as well. Um... And that's pretty much it. So we're going to end our turn. Round two. Okay, so those endless spikes don't attack. All they do is take damage. They move up and, and they're fodder. We want them to attack the spikes. So they'll do retaliate, and then of course uh, the bard song retaliate will do extra damage. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so next thing we want to do 
is I'm going to get the thorn shooter out. I'm assuming the spikes will be out of the way. Uh, otherwise, I'll be crying a little bit. And then we can have a thorn shooter attack. Sure, why not? And then our bard needs to get the second song going. And then for the underneath, we could maybe do some cursing. Yeah, let's get some cursing going. And then the bear itself, we could use some heals. So we'll do this where he can heal himself. And then for the top, we'll do that again. Then Mr. Cragster. I would like to actually move to open the door. Everybody's in the way for the moment. There's a cool little push here, but we're not close enough to the traps to trigger that. I don't have any obstacles. I mean, I guess I could attack and immobilize. We basically have to fight our way out of this. Um, actually, here. Crater. It's going to attack range 3, and then it pushes 2, and the leaf is out. So I can push 1, 2 right into the trap. That's what we're going to do. And then let's just give ourselves some movement. I'm going to switch the order there. So those archers are just going to be a huge pain in the butt. And then here, the, oh, these guys are with the pierce. They're going to attack us many, many times. But at least it's a high number. Alright, so we're going to do second song. And let's get some curses going here. We're going to at least curse two of them. Oh, that's right, I get to attack him. And I think that one got a two. It had a plus two damage and another curse. So a second curse happened. There's nowhere for me to put my summons. Because we're being crunched. Um, I can get two cards back. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Let's get our two cards back. And we'll just have to wait for everything else. And then those archers are going to tear us apart a little bit. The archers are bad for these little spheres. Because there's no retaliate, they're too far away. Alright, so this is the thing I want to do. I'm going to hit... him. thing is I'm going to end up killing him. If I hit him, I can push him. I can push him, but then I won't push him under one of these traps. I don't know how important that is, to be honest. Let's hit the guy closest to us. Because he's not going to retaliate, and you'll see why. Because we're going to push him away. And there's no retaliate, because he's too far away. Then we're going to move four. I don't know why I can't move there. I know it says move cost of two, but this is one. Oh, that's a move cost of two as well. This. Oh, interesting. I'm going to do this just because I want to clear. I want to get the path cleared open, so we can get out of here. I, it would have been nice to get rid of that trap because then I wouldn't have had to move across this two cost movement thing. But it is what it is. And we knew the bear was going to do that. And this, this is where it hurts because now I don't have anything that moves the bear.
still stuck. I can't deploy anything. The spheres are moving out of the way. We can get the thorn shooter out. And then I'm going to have these guys attack. <coughs> so we got him nice and poisoned. I can have him attack, but he doesn't do an attack. So it just doesn't do anything. We'll go ahead and get that big guy out. Then we can get two cards back. Let's do that. And we're done. Round three. So all that's left is the archers. Obviously I can keep summoning more stuff, like the wolves. I think the board is pretty full as it is. So now I, it's more of a, do I have pushes and pulls? Like this is a great push, but I need wind. And if I try to summon these, I need everybody out of the way. I guess we could do a move five and then summon so we can make sure that we have room. You know what? I'm not going to do a move five yet. I'm going to just do... See, this gold. We need to pick up the gold so there's room to put summons down. Uh, I don't know what the right thing to do is here. We'll do those two. Here's our heal two. Let's get that going right away. Then for the bottom piece, I just want to move and pick up some of this gold so we can lay down some more summons and for this one we lost our healing this time around I'm gonna make sure we can heal although actually see the bear is gonna move and then have nobody attack so the top action gets sort of wasted oh we got a ally to summon so we're fine yep so we'll heal and then here, I want to keep going, and I don't know if I have any more pushes. I don't have a stamina potion. Right there, there's a push one. So how do I push him onto a trap? I'd have to stand here, which is blocked. Yeah. I need a pull. Now the other thing I can do is punch this, which will damage him. Very doable. Or just come up here and punch this one, which opens a pathway around the traps this way. You know what? That might be what I'm going to do. Except my punch is down here. But I do have the pick up and throw. Right there. I can pick up and throw one. As long as it's adjacent, I just need to move two. which I can do with that. All right, look at that. Range seven, five damage attack. They're gonna do a lot of damage, these guys. All right, so I want to move up. I'm gonna strengthen everybody around me. That's actually a really good card for the, for the moment here. We're gonna get the heal going. And I gotta be careful, because I need spot for two wolves. If I drop my two guys down here, then I'm just taking up the spots that the wolves can go. I'm gonna wait one more turn before I get those out. And I can at least use that. Get the major stamina back. And here we go.
go. Now we're healing at the start of every turn. We're going to move two. Like so. Go invisible. And I'm going to pick this up. And we want to throw it in such a way... Like here... Doesn't matter. Because it'll hit him. Yeah. We did five damage to him. That was great. And the spheres are going up. And that was the wild thorn that just took him out. <laughs> that wild thorn is good as long as he can stay in range. Um, and yeah, I gotta keep enemies on the board at all times. The problem is the enemy... Or to open this door, I gotta go through the one enemy that's in the way, which means I have to kill it. But we could try to maybe destroy that uh, terrain. We'll see. Alright, I have plenty of room for the wolves. So we'll definitely get that going. I would have liked to have moved two. Well, here, I'm going to use my boots. And we're going to go all the way to there and get that gold. Yeah, I'm... I mean, I, I'm tempted to step on a trap just because, you know, it doesn't bother me. I'll just heal later. So, Archer killed one. We really never got any any benefit. Beast Tyrant's moving up. There's definitely room to get here and attack him. So we got room for the Swamp Liver to come out. And we're going to heal our bear. And we can get one of these out. We'll go ahead and end. Okay, so I could do the Earthen Steed, which actually is a jump. Oh, that's a perfect one. And then I can open the door. Now, I may not like what's on the other side, and I don't want to be too up front. But hell, I can put the Lava Golem out there if I really had the mind to. Or, like I said, I could wait until I get four burn cards. Never actually use the Lava Golem. And just live with what... Because, like, I don't have a lot of cards here. So... Yeah, I'm going to do that. Then I don't have to step on a trap. I can get that door open. I can even retreat back into this room and just let the summons come. Now, the one thing, though, is, is this trap being where it is is preventing... Like, th this is basically one big train that has to go around, and that's going to be a massive problem for getting them into the, the battle. So stepping on the trap and doing three damage would actually save me but I need to get that door open. So I'm going to do that. And then as far as like the other piece that would be on the top... I mean, <laughs> that is the thing to do, is to summon a golem, but... I'm going to... I can make them move. So let's just do that. We can make two of them move. The bard, of course, needs to move up as well. So I got like a, a jump on the top action here. So we may do that. And then for the bottom action, I, I just want to do a move. And of course, we got the bear who's going to be able to attack that thing. This will give it a nice attack, move, attack. And then for the top piece, we give it a move too. I might switch it around and, and swap the position of two enemies. We'll see. 
And then of course, yeah, eraser head. I don't have any jumps, so I can't but I could step right on the trap if I wanted. I'll do a move four. The trap won't stun me or anything, it'll just do three damage. And then that'll open the pathway for all the pets. So they don't have to go all the way around the traps, they can go right up through. And then of course, you know, what am I going to do? I could rock slide. We'll try out rock side slide. And he's going really late. The shooter was able to get a nice hit in. And of course the wolves. So we're going to get that door open right away. I'm going to do this first though. Two summon allies can move. And we're going to go ahead and move the wolf. Right up to there. And then we're going to go ahead and move the pea shooter. Oh no, he's stuck. Look at this. Because this costs two movement and he only has one movement point. Oh, come on. That pea shooter's stuck. Can't get over this. It's going to have to go all the way around. Oh my goodness. That pea shooter's doomed. Alright, so we're going to do three movement points. Alright, we got some really nasty stuff coming out now. And yeah, I need to go hide. Which I will do. I possibly need to go invisible. That one's moving five. One, two, three, four. Death. Murder, death, kill. I'm gonna go invisible. He should have stepped on the trap. Okay, that hurts. I lost my wolf already. The bear's got plenty to attack now, that's for sure. Okay, so... The thought was is I could swap position and then do this. Uh, these guys don't have six or less health. It still might be beneficial to swap position because then the archer here could get killed. But to be honest, these um these fire drakes are not a laughing matter. And we got lucky that none of them attacked us this round. Oh yeah, and then we can push him. I forgot about that. There we go, one trap is down. And then we can move out of the way, and that'll protect the, the other guy. And attack this one. And then we can do a move. And I can make the bear step on the trap, which I'm going to do. So now the trap's out of the way. We can summon another guy. Alright. So my thoughts here is I was going to move the bard as far up as I can. But I'm going to go here and just collect some money. Although I can actually keep going. I'll go there.
Okay, Craghart. So the original plan was just to take some damage. And then I was going to put these things in place. You know, here, here, and then, you know, make, make them take damage. But that would block my dudes. And it's not quite ideal. So we'll just go ahead and use that to move. Oh, I'm being called. My apologies. We were actually supposed to be in Canada today. But was not able to get across the border. And it, it, there's a lot kinds of reasons. My, my son has interviews with colleges. All kinds of things happen. So we had to cancel our trip. And I forgot to tell the place we were staying at. And they were calling us wondering where we were at. So my apologies there. Um, where was I? Okay, yeah, I'm going to end my movement here. And then, yeah, we're going to attack him. Then it damages everybody. It won't kill the archer, though. But I think I'm okay with that. We're going to use the goggles, because we want... To make sure we get a nice damage doubler like that. Holy buckets. Okay. Okay, the bard. We probably want to go early. So we can curse and bless everybody. There's going to be a lot of blesses coming out. Then we can stun... And our bear has nowhere to go. So we want to go as late as possible. And then... We want to go as early as possible, because we need to clear this stuff out. And it'd be nice to get a move three going. So let's try that. Oh my gosh. What was that, two curses and a stun? And then, <laughs> and then the bird goes up and <laughs> takes down a, a creature. Oh my gosh. There's, like, nobody to curse anymore. <laughs> I just blessed a whole bunch of people. And there's... Oh, I can stun him, which is perfect. Now we don't have to worry about him attacking. So here we're going to do a move three. The problem is if I step here, the bear has nowhere to go. I'm going to make sure the bear has somewhere to go. That's more important. And then I do have to forfeit my attack. Both of these guys are stuck. And they're not smart enough to go around this way. All right. So I'm going to move two. I'm going to have the bear... Oh, see, look, they move with a plus one. That's what I need to get these guys over their hump, but I'm way too far back to do anything there. So I'm going to just have this one go.
See, look, none of them are moving because all the enemies are dead. So whoever had the... needs enemies to be on the board at all times is going to fail. Yeah, these are just wastes. So I'm going to go ahead and just move my character. Right here, have one or more monsters present on the map at the beginning of every round. So, Summoner's going to lose hers. And I'm going to have to long rest here. That's a move four. And a move two. I need to go as late as possible. I need somebody to open this door. And I need him to reveal room. So I'm going to short rest. That's fine. That's a move four not enough. And what stinks is I'm going to have to use a move 5 to open that door. It's going to burn another card and then I short rest it. I'm not doing myself a favor here. And I have to protect at least one captive orchid. Where the heck are the orchids? They must be in this these next rooms because I don't know what they're talking about. Um, and then we'll do Massive Boulder, I guess. Alright, so... I'm gonna move... One, two, three, four, five. Yep, there's still no... Orchard. That's a range three. We got an Elite Bandit Guard. We'll move to there. Gonna use that. Do as much damage as I can to Bandit Guard. At least the door's open. So now everybody has somewhere to go. Like the bear, the lizard. I need all the pets to be moving. Alright, so I can make somebody move again, and that somebody should be the bear. And I'm going to have him go all the way in and attack this guy. Because I have this Pierce 4, which is perfect for attacking this... So that guy got punched in the mouth pretty hard. Uh, he definitely did a lot of damage to me. But he's taking damage too. And then you can see our pets are moving their way forward. And that's all you can ask for here. I'm going to do a jump move. Just gonna let me cut over all the stuff and then skip the ability. But look, I can actually do an attack from here, so that's what I'm gonna do. Get him wounded, and he's actually gonna go next. Oh, he got out of range. And he wounded us, but that's okay. We're gonna. So the wolf goes. See these two. These two are stuck. Now all they have to do is move this way. I don't think there's a pathway blocking them. I, this really hurts because I can't resummon this one even if I wanted to. That 
That makes my uh, summoner class seem pretty weak, doesn't it? When I was telling you how powerful she is. So, one thing I can do is I can always, you know, click on one of these cards and dismiss them, like the Thorn Shooter. So that way it would show up in the burn pile and I can always resummon it later. But yeah, that's unfortunate. Alright, I'm stuck. An Earthen Steed to move 5 to get over all this debris is the way to go. And then for the top part... I like the idea of having an ally do something. And then the bard has two things. Go ahead and long rest. And Mr. Racerhead here can move one space forward. That's a nice range attack. Actually, it'd be nice to get that door open. They're going to do a lot of damage, that thing. Dang it. Can't do anything, because I don't want to change the song. Yeah, none of my guys are moving. They have nowhere to go. Like, even the Nail Sphere didn't move, so... So the issue is, there's a traffic jam. So we're going to move five. So we can get like all the way into the room. I'm going to use the boots to get all the way to there. We're going to go ahead and have the bird. And I want the bird to move here and attack this one. The bird did its job. Man, that was a lot of damage. I may have to burn a card here. I do. Oh my gosh, I gotta burn two cards. I'm suddenly a little uncomfortable. So the plan was to... attack him with a plus one attack and a 3 damage. So that'd be a 4 damage attack against 2 shields. And then I could push him. There's a part of me that's like, well, I'd rather open the door, but... This is... It's a burn card, and I don't want to do a burn card to open the door. This will move me 2 spaces, sure. But that won't open the door either. I could forego the plus 1 attack. Move the 2 spaces. And still do this attack. Sure, let's do that. I just won't do as much damage. Oh, there we go. I did some damage anyways. I wonder why he wouldn't move. Is this doorway like a two movement point spot? Hmm. Yeah, I'm losing yet another card. <clears throat> I 
Okay, I'm standing here beside myself. What movie was that? I am standing here beside myself. Come on, JB, you know that movie. Let's see. I'll do that. I have to long rest. I need to heal so badly. So we're going to heal on the bottom. Pierce on the top. And yeah, I need to move four. So let's explosive punch. Get that door open. Yeah, I got the X. I didn't get the credit. So explosive punch. And then... Maybe... I could do Dirt Tornado to move three. Yeah, we'll do that. But let's switch the order. So is this terrain just crappy terrain? I need to see it. How come it's not letting me see what the terrain is? This is a weird mission. Murder, death, kill. We're going to get the heal card back. Because healing is what it needs to do. And yeah, Craighart. We're burning a lot of cards, but we need to... We need to open a door here. There's some orchids. Gotta be <clears throat> the person who has the personal quest. Okay, so Eraserhead's gonna take some damage here. I can get some gold, but I have this attack three immobilized, which is probably more ideal. But I'm gonna get out of the doorway so at least somebody else can come in. And then we're gonna attack three and mobilize this wolf. Or six. And that should be good. And yeah, that guy's gonna do. That guy is gonna do his fist bump. And then the archers are probably gonna. They're, they're attacking the wrong. the wrong person. Yeah, these guys are. getting retaliated against. And then the archers are going to pound them, too. Yeah, these two have no hope. Finally, the pets are moving again. The pet train, as we're going to now call it from here. So I could get the bear to attack, but he's not near anybody. 
I can get him to move, but what good is that? So I'm just going to move two spaces. And then do an attack two and kill that wolf. And curse him. Yeah, those archers are going to be annoying. The good news is I think these guys are going to heal. Because I think my bard song works for them, too. Because the retaliate is working. So we're going to be burning a second one. So what if I... So that'll be burned. So that means I'll have three burn cards. I have one wolf alive. And I have one spike alive. We'll go ahead and long rest. Summoner hasn't really... I guess I just killed somebody with the summoner, so I'm not going to say it's worthless, but he has definitely not been very helpful. Could get a move four. We've got to get into the fray. That's a top card. That would get me right to the doorway. I'm going to attack and curse. we got to heal the bear. Bear's not going to do anything on the top. Yeah, we'll turn this on. Although I did take some damage, which shouldn't be burning more cards, but we're near the end. I mean, look at this. There's not much left. And Mr. Craggy has got two cards left. We'll make do. There is a chest here. I can move all the way up to here. This one will destroy an adjacent obstacle, which will do mild damage to him. I can just do a move four. Yeah. Just gonna do a move four. Get to the chest. And we could do this. Here. Here. Ooh. See, that's gonna block off my path if I do it there. There. We need to take that one away. Nope. That's gonna hurt these guys. You know what? I just won't do a third one. I could damage somebody else, but I, I don't want to... I don't need to worry about him. He's covered. This one's not. Or I could just punch. But we'll do... What I just did. Because that went through the guys with the shields. And then we'll heal ourselves. Boots of Levitation. Ooh, that was one of the things we were going to unlock. So we actually got one. I wonder what happens to the person who retires with the boots. Let's 
guys are taking a beating. It's good to see the captains are healing from our bard song. They're not making it through the armor, though. They're focusing on the one guy they can't kill. I need to help kill that. Oh my goodness, that's no good. Alright, so the plan was to do a move four to get to there. There's no ability to do. And then I can do... Curse. On one of these guys. With a nice doubler. Can't complain about that. Oh look, the... Well, all he did was go where the other guy was. Heal two. We're burning a third one. So here's the part. I want to do this for the bottom. And then uh, move, uh, move five for the bottom. We'll do that for the top, I guess. The bard. We can still help out some. Maybe get some stuns going. Which means we want to go early so we can stun somebody. Let's make the bear... that. And this is interesting. I was talking about how I don't want to short rest with him, but now I do. Because we want to keep this going. And let's start killing some stuff. Let's do an explosive punch right here. So I just need to move forward one space, and we'll do that with that. Let's try to keep these guys alive. Alright. So, my thoughts were, I'm going to move forward, I'm going to go stand on these rocks so I can have nice range, and let's stun somebody. So like we could stun him, so he stops damaging them, or I could stun both of them in the back. Then Craig will heal too. We're going to go ahead and just move forward two spaces. And then we're going to punch this thing and damage everybody. There we go, we saved. Ah, nothing burger. So this is the part that's interesting. He only has six health, so murder, death, kill. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and move the bear. I'm just going to move him right on up. And attack this guy. End the turn. Uh. 
summoner is gonna go all right so we have a lot of summons still in the map so the idea is, is if I did this see look I can do an eight damage attack eight or six I could basically kill almost anything on the board I want these guys go at the end but I'm going to undo that. Let's do the summoned allies can move. Two of them. So we're going to have the skeleton do the first moving. And just get two more into the room. And then we're going to have that do the other one. And we'll just move it as far up there as we can. Alright, now, who am I going to kill? He's stunned. This one will probably attack the bird, now that I put the bird there. This one, I don't, I think will attack the bear. So let's go ahead and kill the one with all the armor. Yep, good as dead. Nothing bigger. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, he's attacking too. That's why. Long rest. Long rest. Oh. Let's get some gold. There's eight up there. Four there. We'll get this one. And we'll use this just as a regular attack. And we'll pump it up. There it is. Mission complete. I shouldn't have long rested. I can get the egg gold, but he's going to retire. So I'm just going to get the four gold. And I don't think anybody's going to get that eight gold. <laughs> All these summons. It was basically a summon drain going through this map. Some of these maps are like this, though, where... You know, it's very narrow, and so all these summons actually don't do any uh, any good. And it's hard to tell. So it was easier to tell when you play the board game because you pull out the scenario and you actually look at the maps. So you could see the scenario. Like, when you're playing this game, you have no idea what your maps are going to look like, so it's a little bit harder. But we still won. Even with the summons, right? Now, you could argue that the Bard's the reason we're winning, and I would agree. <laughs> That's why the Bard's awesome. But that summoner was able to run up and damage some things. So there we go. We got perk points for a couple of them. The summoner, it would be nice to get perk points for. The 
you know, the bard, not so much, but it's okay. We wanted to get somebody retired, and we did. We even got some missions complete. Ten gold each, two reputation. Two of our guys were level nine, so it didn't really make much of a difference. And there we go. So Mr. Eraserhead is going to retire. And there he is, level six. He would have leveled up. And we just unlocked awesomeness. Go ahead and do the city encounter first. Well, the rats thing. We always help her. Okay. So, obviously we have things that we may need to sell to make room. Because I have yet another character who wants stuff. But, there it is. The Doomstalker. High range damage. Doom abilities allow a wide range of secondary effects. And those Doom abilities are quite good. And a decent array of... You saw it. Summons. <laughs> so, you thought that the pet train was bad before. Just wait. <laughs> so yes, my final four is a bard who summons. And issues retaliate to and heal to every single round. A summoner who summons, a rat and bear who summons, and a doomstalker who summons. And yes, there are some missions where the summons just get their butts kicked. Because you go up against that one guy that just does two damage to the entire map. Um, it's really hard for summons to stay alive in, in that situation. But uh, <laughs> it is quite good. Generally wants to focus on one enemy at a time. That is true. But you sort of need that, right? Because we've got all these other guys that that sort of are generic. Um, casting a Doom often involves skipping movement. That is also true. Every visit to Gloomhaven ends up with some poor merchant getting doomed over the price of an item. Um, that is just a joke. And <laughs> there is only one name for a character that looks like this. And this is a blast to the 80s past. Uh, from the N Nintendo days, but it is Kid Icarus. And yeah, so see, look, we got another one of these we could unlock. Kill 15 Vermlings, which is real easy to do. We don't want to do that. Kill 8 Forest Imps. And then we have to unlock a scenario and follow it to conclusion. Uh, so at least it, with this one, I don't have to do that scenario if I don't want to. If he was supposed to make a name, he did or noise, he didn't. So yes, we got Kid Icarus, and um, Tremor Blade, Brilliant Blade, Wand of Infernos. So I think it did change, because I think one of these was looking for le 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 levitation boots. Wasn't him? Wasn't her? Because these two could still spawn something. Right there it is. Lev so you would unlock levitation boots. We already have them. So retiring Grizzly Adams isn't even worth it. But that's okay. So now here's what's weird. We got two level nines, and then we have a level six and a level one. Um, but that's that's basically the the spiel. All right. A uh, couple of things. Let's do this. He has a very nice twelve card, you know, uh, deck. Let's, let's start at the top. Next four times, a doomed enemy dies. Perform an attack to range 5. So, again, really high range. And then on the bottom, you can see here, Doom. Mark any enemy as doomed. When uh, the enemy dies or another Doom is played, discard this card. So what it does is add plus 2 attack to all your attacks targeting this enemy. 
So it's just like the mark, you know, a ranger mark. So you're dooming one character, and that doomed character will always get plus two attacks uh, from all your attacks, uh, but only yours. And here is a burn card at the top, or a doom. Uh, this enemy's attack, move, and range, you reduce it all by one. And <laughs> it is awesome because you can reduce it to zero. Um, so they move zero, they have a zero range. <laughs> you can really um, use this to your advantage. Okay. First summon is a Warhawk. Doesn't have a lot of hit points, but uh, really good damage. When this enemy dies, uh, move to the hex in which it died, so you get to instantly teleport there. Um, so you can mark any enemy as doomed. So you could mark an enemy uh, that's doomed on the other end of the map. Or on the other end of Lava Pit, right? Uh, you can't cross. And then after you mark him, you kill him, because you have long range arrows, and then you're instantly on the other side. So that's uh, something you can do uh, to teleport around. If you had the Scoundrel, who can move seven and go invisible, you know, open up doors right to the next room, and then you would just uh, uh, mark an enemy that's in that new room, and then the Scoundrel goes and kills him, like ganks him, and then boom, you're in the room with the Scoundrel helping out. So there's a couple of cool things you can do with that Doom. The Battle Boar, I remember this one being okay, the, the issue is, like, it has a lot of health, but it does no damage. Um, and then the Doom, when the enemy dies, you get to heal four. Uh, great card, but the burn is awful. And if you notice, all these are burn cards at the top. So here, you Doom somebody, and he suffers two damage at the start of every turn. So he's eventually going to die. So this is perfect for like, those highly shielded guys. You just doom them. And then um, another burn. So really bad on the burn cards here. Uh, or otherwise you're doing just generic attacks. All allies add plus one to their attack against this enemy. So remember, this one was plus two for your attacks. This one is everybody else and you. Or no, uh, all allies get plus one attack, but you don't. Here, you could create a trap. Again, it's another burn card. When this enemy dies, all enemies adjacent um, to the hex in, that, in which it died suffers three damage. Perfect against the oozes. Uh, the next three times a doomed enemy dies within range two of another enemy, Transfer one Doom to that enemy instead of discarding it. <laughs> so, um, uh, another great thing for the oozes. When this enemy dies, force all enemies adjacent to it to perform a move one. Finally, a card that is not going to burn. Create a damage two trap. Immobilize, very mild. Attack three, range five, move four. Loot one. Move and heal, attack two, add plus two attack, and gain one experience if it's doomed. So there's only like four cards that don't burn. The rest are like doom cards. And then the three bonus ones here is you can turn on retaliate, which is fantastic, but it's a burn card. Each time the enemy suffers damage, you get to heal. It would be nice if it didn't have the bard. Uh, here, the vicious jackal. Uh, only does one damage, but it does wound, which that's what you would primarily use it for. All summoned allies add plus two attack to their attacks targeting this enemy. Keyword summoned, and guess what? This is a summoning party, so this is the best card to have in there, because uh, you know you basically you mark somebody that you know your your skeletons or whatever are trying to attack. And they would get plus two. And then if you can do this along with the uh, this one here, where after it dies, it it bounces to another one, and your summons are just clear in the room like mad. So this is where uh, this card helps your summons to just totally clear a room. 
Um, so, like, which one would I get rid of? Well, that's a good question. I mean, detonation's okay. I would think I would get rid of... Like, this one is good. Sometimes you just want an enemy to die. You put that on a boss, right? The summons you don't want to mess with. This one can be good. Uh, you know, reducing an enemy's move and range could make all the difference. And the next time a doomed enemy dies, you get a free attack. Uh, so which one? I would get rid of that one, and we do the hunt begins. And then this last one is just a... Uh, so if the target's undamaged, uh, you gain an experience point and plus two attack. So this is a four damage attack uh, if you can hit an undamaged target. And it's got a move three jump. I actually like that one a lot. Probably a lot more than this one. I mean, the heal self is nice, but I would take fresh kill instead. All right. We haven't even started leveling up, so you got to see his deck. I would say it's pretty good, right? Um, interesting character, at least, if not good. Okay, you gain advantage on one attack each turn, targeting a doomed enemy. You and all allies gain Pierce 2 on all your attacks targeting this enemy. Now tell me that a Pierce 2 is not awesome. <laughs> And then, and then here, plus two attack to all your attacks targeting doomed enemies this round. It's like a... So this is just a regular card you could use. So if you're sick of having all these doomed cards, you can, you know... But that's the problem. If you're carrying around all these doomed cards, they're great because they're very situational and, and useful, but... You know, you're basically doing generic move, generic attack. Which means you need the comfortable shoes with this guy. So that way you're moving three instead of just two. If you're skipping the bottom piece. Now the generic attack, I think there was a, a weapon you could get that makes it an attack three instead of attack two. And that's the perfect weapon for this guy. Um, so... Which one do we do? Uh, that pierce ability, when you need it, it is super powerful. And of course, there's times when it's not all that great. This would, would be great to replace one of these. Like, like, do I really need, you know, this one where all elements get plus one to their attack? That's, you know, getting plus one to your attack against somebody. Um, I would almost rather, you know, having the enemy suffer two damage at the start of its turn. Because you know, there's only three allies, so all three allies get plus one attack. Um, so I'd rather replace this with something like this, where every round I get to attack two people at a range five, you know. Um, or, you know, do I put the pierce in? And, of course, the pierce will upgrade one of these. This little detonation one can be interesting, because the three damage to everybody around him... If he's completely surrounded, you could really um, do a lot of damage. And this one stinks, except for the fact that this little transfer of doom thing is perfect. So, you know, he's got, it's going to bounce around. Uh, the bottom part stinks, so let's... I'm starting to think maybe the boar is not that good. You know, it's a burn card, yes. The heal for self is not all that helpful either. It's just a high damage animal that does one damage. Maybe we upgrade this one, Rain of Arrows. So we'll put the Pierce in instead. So yes, we're we're grabbing another Doom card. I thought the other one was decent, though. Attack 3. Target all enemies within range 3. Gain 1 for each 
two enemies targeted. The only thing it thinks is it's burn. When this enemy dies, perform an attack two, range three, target three action. Okay. Attack two, range four, add plus three, and gain one if it's doomed, and then retaliate two. Um, that one is clearly the better. And we had a card. I may have disabled it. I thought we had a card that said if you... Like, this one's worth replacing. It's not that great a card. Right there. Nope. There was one that had, just like this, if the target is doomed, right here, swift trickery. So it's 2, 4, add plus 2 if the target is doomed. This one's 2, 4, add plus 3 if the target is doomed. Um, but I'm actually going to get rid of this one. This one is crap. And we'll just have two of them that gives us a bonus if the target's doomed. Okay, level 4. Loot 2, you and allies gain advantage. It's like having a bless. Um, create a 2 wound trap. Wound all enemies adjacent to the trap. And a move 5 jump. The move 5 jump is where the, that one's at. Alright, I gotta take pause quick here. Okay, um, I'm not a big fan of either of these. The reason you take this one is for the move 5 jump, which I will take. I just don't know what we would replace. Oh, and here's the thing, like, when this enemy dies or another Doom is played, discard this card. When it's discarded, <coughs> you get it back after you rest. So, these Doom cards are different. Because, um, obviously, like, when you summon something, then it gets burned. With the Doom, when an enemy dies, uh, it goes away, so then you're using another Doom card. So you're, like, holding on to your Doom cards and using these these other ones that don't have Doom on them in between rounds to try to kill the Doom guy, which is why uh, we wanted cards that have the Doomed effect on them. Uh, because you're, you're going to Doom somebody, and then you want to do a lot of damage to the Doomed guy. Uh, and then if the Doom guy dies, then you're going to Doom somebody again, which is the bottom, and then, you know, try to hit him again. And, of course, you can bring back cards if you have stamina stuff like that so that's that's the idea of this guy now this is just a straight up I want to move five five is an excellent amount of movement and it's a jump uh, the problem is is which card do you replace and we have this one here it's a move three jump but the top is a nice damage dealer if the targets not damaged yet This one has a nice move 5, but it's a Doom. Here's a move 4 with a generic range 5 attack. So we could say, you know what, I'd rather have a move 5 jump, which is better than a move 4, but I lose the uh, top attack, and I'm stuck with a wound damage. So it's a trap that will do 2 damage, and then wound everybody around the trap. That's hard to do, because usually to get an enemy to step on a trap, you have to push them. Um, so what's the chances there's going to be a whole bunch of enemies around it? Uh, it's perfect when you have a bunch of imps and vermlings and, you know, the oozes come to mind. Some of these later missions do need 
the jump ability bad because I think the designer got really cute with a whole bunch of lava tiles and stuff like that. Uh, I just don't know if I want to lose an attack for it. I mean, that trap thing on the top is worthless. Or it's not very good. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm just going to hold on to it. I'm not going to use it, per se. And let's level up. You may have two dooms active on the same target. If a third doom is played, blah blah blah. So you can put a doom one that's going to cause him to lose two damage at a time, and the one that causes him to have uh, pierce two. Uh, mark any one normal or elite enemy as doomed. At the start of your next three turns, advance the tracker on this effect. If it advances three times, kill the target. So basically, it's a it's a timer from. Uh, Oh gosh, what's that Uma Thurman show where she has the the samurai sword. She's waking up in the hospital. She's paralyzed. And she got beat up at her wedding. Oh, I know you guys know what that... Uh, why am I forgetting the name of it? That's such an awesome show. Uh, it's got basically... It's, it's like a two-movie series. But anyways, you know, where they do that thing where they, you know, just tap you in the chest with their fingers. And then you, you know, you walk around for a little bit and then all of a sudden your heart stops. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. So, basically, it's a ticking bomb, and three turns later, they die. The perfect card... F Remember, uh, Doom can be anywhere on the map. So, the power behind this is you can Doom somebody that's on the other end of the map, and they just die, and then, of course, the card gets discarded, and then once you get it back again, you can Doom somebody else the same way. Uh, it's pretty neat. I've never really needed to have two dooms, because to be quite... Well, I say that phrase way too much. I always say, to be quite honest. Um, the the two dooms is too difficult to do. It takes you two turns to put the dooms on, and by then, usually, you killed the guy, because you're getting plus so much damage against your doom characters. Uh, but the bottom part here is a set-it-and-forget-it kind of thing. So I'm going to doom somebody... That I know I'm not going to, you know, he's behind some wall. He's behind a bunch of lava. I can't quite get to him. But I'm going to, you know, I got 30 other guys I need to worry about right now. So I'm going to just doom him. And then after three turns, he's just going to die. Because even elites will die. Um, that's a good card. And then, of course, you can make your... This is a lot like the summoner card. And you can target one doomed enemy at any range. So, <laughs> doesn't matter. As long as they're in your line of sight, you do a two damage attack. That's actually pretty good. I wish I could replace this piece of crap with this one. But I'm going to go ahead and take an inescapable fate. I don't know what card I'm going to replace that with, but... Um, I think the one that does two damage... Gonna replace it with this detonation one. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather do this one. And there we go. That's him with his level ups. And then we got his. We gotta improve his math. We got five more to go. So this is a add target roller. A stun. Poison wound, plus ones. So he's got a pretty average thing. These two are always going to be here, so he's going to always have those negatives. Uh, let's do the stun and the wound. I got three more to go. One, two. And let's just ignore scenario effects. Three. I 
Okay, and we're still not done because now we got to buy. That adds a plus one range. Where's the weapon? Right here. Whenever you use the top of an ability card, perform like the default. So if I don't want to burn a card, I just want to do a default action. This does a attack 3 instead of a normal attack 2. That's crucial for him. So we're going to get him a versatile dagger. And probably wouldn't hurt to get him a shield for the other hand. We could... I mean, you could basically make him like a true ranger and then, you know, put a, a weapon in his other hand. Right, so he's going to be dual wielding. Uh, there's no harm in that. Like, if you think the shield will help, you know, protect him from some damage, or you can dual wield him, and then he could wound somebody. Ooh, excuse me, there's a lot of choices. I think for now we're going to do that, and then, yeah, the with the shoes... See this? You're flying all the time. No matter what you do, you're flying. This is a very good shoe. But for him, he needs the comfortable shoes. Or does he? He's Kid Icarus. He should be flying. <laughs> this is very thematic for him to be flying. I was thinking he needed the comfortable shoes because we'd be doing a lot of this with these bottoms. But I'm sort of thinking no, because he does have decent move cards on the bottom. I guess it's not a lot. And the move cards he has... He's got maybe three of them, I guess, that are bigger move cards. This is the one. We didn't equip it. Who should be flying? Actually, he's got comfortable shoes. This is the one that should be flying. Although we added plus three movement. That's really good. Somebody should be flying in these four, though. So maybe it really should be him. Hmm... And it's all the time. Doesn't matter what your movement is. And you can fly over traps. Yeah. That's very thematic with him. I mean, he is Kid Icarus after all. Kid Icarus flies. Alright, so now he's down to 25. And we need to get him... Healing and Stamina. You can see both staminas are gone. So now we're going to have to start pilfering from the other characters. So Dr. Doom is using just a minor healing. So who else is there? There's Grizzly Adams. Major stamina. Yeah, he's going to have to sell that. Gonna sell his major stamina. Uh, this ancient drill is nice. He may have to sell his sell his studded leather. We'll wait on that. He can keep the boots. Minor power is fine. Oh, Starfire is the other one. Yeah, I got so many good characters now. Starfire is the one 
has a major and a minor. Oh man. But I can't have them all, you know? I can only have certain characters. Twenty-two gold. This is forty gold worth of stuff. Starfire is worthless without these. So if I take them away, I am robbing her from her ability to help. What are we looking at here? From Major Stamina... Actually, I mainly need the one. It's the Minor Stamina. There's only four of those. Because Alice has the Major Stamina. going to be everything he has. So no armor, no nothing. That's it. I don't know. It's a uh, it's definitely a slow process. Like for her, I would trade this minor mana for a minor stamina, which I would have to steal from either Minty or um Starfire. And of course the head item I would need to steal from Mindy. Again, I can't afford that. And then Lola here never actually got a body item and can buy... Well, he wants a healing potion. There's six of these left, so we can get a major if we wanted, or a minor. This one only costs five. I mean, this is an interesting one. Uh, to have a bard wearing mage robes isn't unheard of, I guess, in the D&D &D world, but, you know, the few times you attack, you can add a plus one to it. I mean, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but, uh, like, for example, he has the stun, which is actually a, a zero damage attack. If I added a plus one... Anyways, it, there's, some, there's an interesting idea there. We have many times needed a healing potion for him, and so we'll at least get him a major healing so he can heal himself back up. And that took his money down a bit. We come back to here. Can't quite afford that. This might help. You know, you at least give him disadvantage. And of course the Cloak of Pockets could be helpful. Or we just hold on to the money for now. That's what we'll do. So anyways, uh, there we go. We got our final four. I've been talking about it for... How long have I been doing this series now? For 30 hours? We're, what, 30 hours into this game? Uh, I finally got the party that I'm telling you I wanted. I don't have all the items yet. So we need to bling them out in order for them to be truly as powerful as they should be. But this can be a very powerful party. So that's the idea. Uh, I haven't gotten rid of Starfire or Mindy because there's reasons. Starfire, of course, blends very well with any of these characters, especially the Bard, uh, you know, can hand out stuff. And then Mindy, you've seen Mindy. Like, I, I don't think there's anything left to prove with that character. She can go move seven, fly over everybody, and um, open a door, and then go invisible and gank people left and right. Um, and uh, 
she can do it all alone. And she has enough hit points that she can absorb the hits and everything else along the way. So, anyways, a uh, very good character. So there's no reason to, to discard her. Um, but when you... Like, if, okay, who would I put Mindy in if I had to? I'd probably replace Kid Icarus with Mindy. Uh, but that's about it, you know? And then where would Starfire go? Well, Kid Icarus again. So Kid Icarus is probably the the weak link in the party. But to be, you know, the the bear could be a weak link too, if you think about it. Um, when that bear dies, this guy's useless. But anyways, um, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, and, and maybe we'll get to see these guys going very soon.